I'm here at Quinton Rail Technology Center today visiting Rail Life Exhibition, the first event after nearly 15 months of not having in-person events. Bria team is visiting our members and seeing what is being demonstrated today. So please follow me and let's find out. We are here now at SPL uh, Powerlines UK stand and I'm here with Lee. Uh, Lee, what are you showing here today at the Rail Life event? Hi there, I'm Lee Pounder, Regional Director for Scotland. We're here showcasing some of our plant today. Uh, also what we're doing across the country, primarily in Scotland and Eastern at this moment in time. You know, it's been a, an interesting year uh, for all of us. What are you most exciting, uh, excited for the future in the railway industry? Okay. It, it has absolutely been a challenging year, but we're very fortunate that we've been doing a lot of the early design and engagement for the real rolling programme of decarbonisation in Scotland. So it's what we call phase one of the, the RPOD. So that's really starting to evolve and mature now, and we're starting to see that go to site. So the next two, two and a half years is going to be really, really exciting, really, really busy. So Mark, uh, tell us about this machinery and what are you the most proud of? Uh, we look at the 270 Ultimate Dulcin, which is going to be a big addition to the SPL fleet, which is more than we can use it for putting up structures, cross portals, and it's an heavy lifter, which helps us be another clicking the ointment for a big thing for the SPL power lines and the overhead line group as a whole. And do you have any other uh, machines that you're demonstrating here? Well, we have the knuckle boom crane with the double drum on the back. We have the ZEC unit and we also have the mutes. today at Dura Composite Stand and I am here with Jonathan and Stuart. What is Dura doing next? What is uh, the thing for Dura in the next uh, years? Well in the round industry um, and across many sectors for Dura Composites is that we're launching or have launched a while ago our DT range. That's the next stage in innovation within composite uh, materials within infrastructure. But beyond this with obviously the announcement of um, Great British Rail and also the Williams Review and announcements from that we're hopefully going to see the opportunities where we can work sort of closer to the asset owners and with that be able to demonstrate the economies of scale by working directly with an SME. This particular product is called the Dura Platform Mount Bridge Overlay System. There's a very clever arrangement where you can adjust the height of the system which means that um, for stations where either there's been a change in level due to subsidence or there's been a um, or there are new trains that have a different stepping height, you can adjust the platform train interface accordingly so that um, particularly the elderly, people with shopping bags or disabled folk can get onto the train more easily. So what we have here is, um, we call it our hybrid system. So it's our Dura platform product, similar to the one that we looked at um, previously. So the top surface of the product is very, very similar, can be specified in two different heights, but it's beneath the platform where the differences are. So remember this is for new builds or extensions so rather than adjusting on top of an existing one this is um, when you're creating a new platform. So we've teamed um, GRP, so glass reinforced polymer which is one of our um, core technologies with steel and whilst steel in some cases is a competitor of ours we've embraced it. Chris, what are you showing uh, to Rail Life visitors today? Uh, we're sharing our new solution for aluminothermic welding, which is our auto seal moulds uh, and associated equipment. Uh, aluminothermic welding is traditional for looting uh, mediums with sand or paste. We've uh, engineered that out uh, and we've now put a solution in place which is like a, an expanding foam. So. It, the idea of it, it saves time, it's better for the welders on site, and essentially it reduces the defect rate. I am 
loving it. It's so good to be back out meeting people, seeing people and talking rail. We've had the likes of Andrew Haynes has been to see us, we've had Ian Prosser coming across the season doing all the name dropping. But we've had real, you know, we've had track, track maintenance engineers across as well. So you're know, speaking to the TMEs about the stuff that we're doing. It's fantastic. It's speaking to the people that you wouldn't normally. We're sharing our AVA product, uh, which is our um, capability of capturing video data from across the network and making that instantly accessible securely online. And that's been used by multiple disciplines now, um, from signalling to uh, asset man management and maintenance, e ecology, vegetation. Um, so yeah, so we've got loads of different people have come up to us to talk about what they're doing. This is the first time we've been back to Rail Live for two years. We're tremendously excited. We've got a couple of things on show here, mostly about what we're doing in the industry. We've also got a GWR flex unit, tri-mode, first one in the UK. So we're really excited on taking a 15-year lease here, which will allow us to plan for the future. We spent much of today and tomorrow, I suspect, meeting with existing suppliers, new partners, and planning for how we together can deliver to meet the aspirations of the Williams Shapps plan and also the need to decarbonise today's railway. Uh, so you probably know we have the UK's first hydrogen train. Uh, we'll shortly be introducing with our partners Chilton a hybrid train which will be a battery diesel train. We're exploring uh, cleaning up technology on existing DMU fleets. We've got a battery train in production to run on third rail networks and beneath the overhead wires. So there's a huge amount that Portalbrook is doing to really accelerate the decarbonisation of Britain's railways. Behind me you see Network Rail's newest addition to its uh, portfolio, a flow bridge, a modular, sustainable design and next to me are two people who helped design and build this uh, fantastic construction. So Ahmed, please uh, tell about a bit yourself, uh, about yourself and the bridge. Um, I'm the senior design engineer for Network Rail and I uh, did the design from the structural point of view for the bridge. And um, it's a modular construction. It's made of composite entirely with just a little bit of metallic bit in it. It's sustainable, costs less, and it's got a lot of innovations built into it, which I think is going to make this a unique structure. Yeah, the challenge was to, to come up with a gravity clip system. So we created um, a, a spine base that the actual units of the bridge sit on. Uh, we come up with an idea of actually opening up the bridge so we can then clamp it around the spine. Uh, once it's clamped around the spine, uh, we then compress with a, with a deck span panel. Um, that's what makes this bridge really unique, just the way it flows um, and just, the, the, like I say, the people that we've had involved. Um, regarding uh, the resin we're using, we're going to be going to recycled resin. Um, like we say, the recycled resin uh, contains plast recyclable plastic bottles. Um, there's seven and a half thousand bottles in one drum of resin. So if you imagine that throughout the whole bridge, it's, it's, it's big cost savings and to the planet. So yeah, that's where, that's where we're looking to take this. So today we're demonstrating the um, the, the, the way that we can remove and um, reinstall the coating that's, uh, the, that's applied onto the rail products. So we've uh, we developed a product called Zenoco coating. Um, so that's basically where rails are installed in the most hazardous, hazardous uh, in, um, installations. And it's about protecting it to make sure it lasts longer. Um, what we're doing today is demonstrating that because sometimes during the installation period, the coating can be damaged, um, what we're demonstrating today is that there is, a, there is an easy process to be able to remove that and then also reinstate that and also, also the main thing is as well is to check that there's no zinc remaining for when they do the welding in track. So just this year alone we'll be investing over £100 million in a new billet uh, caster, a new um, a scrap preheating facility, uh, some new cranes and also some environmental uh, control systems as well. So it, that, that's, that's what our, our main focus is at the moment. Today we're showing a range of products that we do. Uh, as you can see, we produce platform copings, 
cable troughing, retaining wall systems, and also we have the capacity to produce anything in terms of bespoke concrete. So anybody in the industry who's looking for a supplier of a product which isn't currently on the market, we can fill that void. We've got a facility designated just for bespoke concrete, so we can help design the product, basically just to offer a solution. So anybody who wants to come to us with a, a, a a problem they have, we can help design a product, fit their requirements um, and, and manufacture it and it saves a whole host of problems pre-casting products off-site rather than casting on-site and track-side. So it's an interesting future waiting us all ahead with the changes in the railway industry. What excites you the most in the sort of in the supply sector but in the industry as a whole as well? I think at the moment we're extremely busy. I think most um, suppliers are experiencing a, a really good marketplace at the moment. We've got a wide range of products. Um, we're looking to increase it all the time with innovation. We're a UK manufacturer, so our distance from manufacture to delivery, I think it's one of the shortest in the marketplace. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to a, an ever-increasing market, really. There's, there's lots of really, really good projects coming up, and we hope to be at the part of those, really.